Are you a fan of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and want to experience it on modern platforms with enhanced features? Today we're diving into a cool modification of the game called The Ship of Harkinian, a project that brings Ocarina of Time to the PC with new capabilities. We'll cover what exactly it is, why it's important, and how to install it so you can enjoy Zelda in the modern age. The Ship of Harkinian is a PC port developed through a decompilation process. This allows the game to run natively on modern hardware, offering enhanced features like high-definition graphics, widescreen support, and customizable controls. But it's much more than that. Decompilations are crucial because they take the original game code and transform it into a format that can be modified and improved upon, while also preserving the essence of the original game. They're so important because they give us the ability to keep these classic games alive and accessible on modern platforms. In fact, here's a link explaining the process which you can find in the description below, as well as links to do all this cool stuff. To get started, you'll need a specific ROM of The Legend of Zelda, more specifically the debug ROM, with this specific checksum. Like in my previous Zelda video, you can use an online checksum tool to double check. Once you have the correct ROM though, we're going to download the latest version of the Ship of Harkinian from the Harbor Master's GitHub page. Extract the downloaded files and place the ROM in the designated folder. And then load up the soh.ex file. A window will pop up that says create an OTR file. Then on the next screen you're going to confirm that you selected the right file by hitting yes. The installation will run in a command line window. And once it's finished, another window will appear saying Extraction Complete. Then you're going to hit No because you don't have any more ROMs to extract. And then the game should automatically load. And just like that, you have a cool PC port of Ocarina of Time. It's a pretty straightforward installation, but like I always say, always adjust your controls first. You can press the F1 key to bring up the top menu, and then go to Settings and select Controller, and then Controller Mapping. And then just go through all the buttons and adjust things and blah blah blah, you know what to do. So either way, let's go over some cool things that you can do in this game that you can't do in the original N64 version. What's cool is that the ship already has some presets ready to go. You just have to go under Enhancements and then select one. There are many different presets, such as adding quality of life features or various gameplay enhancements, that make the game slightly better for different difficulty levels. Plus, you know, there's also the randomizer for those who want to see some funky things. I recommend going through all the numerous settings that this build has, just to check out all the crazy features that it comes with. But I'll cover some notable ones that I personally found cool. Since it's in windowed mode, you can always change the UI to suit your taste. Like ultra wide. Additionally, you can see a D-pad underneath the C buttons, allowing you to add more items to your repertoire. The bunny hood now lets you run really fast, similar to Majora's Mask. Speaking of speed, how about using the hook shot on everything and make it much longer to cover crazy distances? There's also the Super Tunic that combines the abilities of all tunics into one, so you don't have to keep switching. And use weapons typically restricted to either Adult Link or Child Link, like using the Boomerang as an adult for example. Are you tired of day and night cycles? Why not just freeze time? Are you tired of not being able to reach certain areas? Use a combination of the moon jump and no clipping to explore different areas. It's like having an episode of Boundary Break at your fingertips. Just be careful with this one because you might fall and can't get up. There's also a ton of other features for debuggers and people making modifications to the game. I encourage you to explore every single option in this, as it is designed to let players experience this classic in the best possible way. And this makes me excited for the future possibilities for other N64 classics receiving this similar treatment. But just be sure I'll be exploring this game and other future fan-made modifications in upcoming videos. So be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell if you want more content like this. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.